This is a story how Art got me arrested for the first time and how my brother saved my ass. And to tell this story, I'm gonna have to take you back to when I was at the age of 16. Not too far from my house, there used to be this abandoned hotel. And back in the day, this hotel used to be like something from the Great Gatsby. The hotel had massive chandeliers, had a luxury swimming pool, garden areas, a place where people can sit and eat their caviar, just a super luxurious place. And us being kids at the time, this used to be a place we would take our bikes on the weekend and we would just roam free, throwing rocks at pigeons, that kind of stuff, just getting up to mayhem. But there's something I never noticed until that day. And that was this cream white wall. And it was a massive long wall. And it just sat there in the middle of all this destruction. And if you're a sort of graffiti writer, you know those type of walls. The walls that kind of just look at you and say, paint me, baby. Come here and paint me. That kind of wall. And as we left that day, there's something in my mind where I could just see that wall. And there's something just telling me, man, you have to go and paint that. You have to go paint something so big and so incredible that when you upload a picture to your Bebo profile, everyone's going to know for sure that you are the man. So feeling super hyped up and super inspired, I ran home that day. <laughs> I ran home, I grabbed my brother's black book and I started going to work laying down a sketch. At the time, I can actually remember what I was writing. I had the name Snix. So that's S-N-I-C-K-S. That's two S's, a big old K, and a bent out N. So that's quite a technical letter combination if you ask me. But I can remember clearly that the sketch wasn't that bad for that age. I could be wrong, I'm sure if I saw it today I might say to myself, that is the most wackest I've ever seen. But in my head I'm just gonna allow it and say, hey, it wasn't too bad, it wasn't too bad. And with that in, and being armed with that piece, I grabbed my graffiti magazine and I just took the feel from somebody else. The fill was just lovely, luxurious, pink and purple, bubbly fill, black outlines with a few grey spots popping off. It was fresh to death and I just bit that, I took it, I just thought no one's gonna know. So with my piece and my colours all lined up, I was ready to cause destruction. Next day rolls around and I wake up early, I'm buzzing, I'm thinking yes, today's the day I'm gonna put my foot down and prove to everyone that I can paint something crazy. So I pack my bags onto my bike and off I go. Now the hotel itself is located in a rich area, so I decided because I'm here in my bad paint covered Nike tracksuit and my bag just full of paint, I locked my bike about 5 minutes away and decided to walk down and somehow just jump straight into the hotel. So as I'm walking, I'm just chilling, enjoying the sun, I slowly move towards the forest edge because the whole thing is covered by all these trees. And as I'm looking, the car goes by, I think three, two, one, and I just launch in and I'm in. I'm covered by the trees and now I'm starting to feel safe. This is where my confidence starts growing as I know and I can hear that wall calling my name. So when I get to the wall that surrounds the hotel, I'm launch my bag over, climb this tree, there's a little sweet spot you can get over. One, two, three, and I'm over. I land, feet there, and suddenly it's like I've been transformed to a different world. It's silent. I think that's good, it's silent, no one's there, but there is something slightly unnerving about complete silence. So I grab my bag and I'm thinking, damn, where's this pool? Like a crackhead, where's this pool? I'm walking through the grounds of the hotel and just like that, it's standing in front of me, beaming brighter than it did the day before. So I walk up to this wall, I lay my bag down and I slowly start unloading the paint. Pull out my sketch and I'm just sat there trying to feel the energy of the place, trying to breathe and just accept the fact that I'm just gonna lay down the baddest piece anyone has ever seen. So I start laying down my first foundation lines and everything feels good. I step back, the piece is all in proportion. It's looking just like the sketch and even as I go, my confidence is growing. I'm thinking to myself, ooh, those girls on Bebo are gonna be giving me mad love hearts when they see this. And time goes by, it's still going well. I'm laying down the fill, the pink and the purple is fading lovely. Stepping back, then I'm adjusting my letters and then I put out the black. When this black lays itself on this wall, this piece is gonna be popping. So I'm there just laying all the black lines down, thinking to myself, I can't wait to get this finished and get that flick of this so I can just show all my friends. And this is where things took a really bad turn. You gotta remember the whole time it was silent, the only thing I could hear was birds. So obviously I started to feel panic when I started to hear the crushing of leaves as footsteps moved closer. Next to the wall was this small alleyway hidden by a tree. All I could hear was, Crunch, crunch, crunch. And at that point, my animal instincts just kicked 
in solid. So I just turn around and bolt. I leave my bag there. The bag has all this paint. It has a camera in there. I didn't, I'm not even thinking that way. I bolt. So I'm running, okay? And all I hear is this commotion, this panic. All I hear is, all right. So I'm running, okay? Boom, 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 boom. I'm going, I'm going. I turn around. I don't even look at first. But then I turn around to have a look and I see two guys. And one of the guys is on his knees holding onto a leash, ready to let his dog go. I just turn back around and I'm still running. And then I hear the words I know I didn't want to hear. He said, you need to stop on letting this dog off the lead. I, I like, kind of laughed at that point because I was way ahead, bro. And I knew the exit. I was on my way out of there. I had the golden ticket out of there. So I just turned back and kept running. I just kept running for the exit. Anyway, he lets the dog off. I turn around to check. I'm still thinking, cool, he's miles away. I turn back around. Boom, boom, boom. I'm running. I take a look to my left. And I kid you not, this dog was now one meter away from me. And my heart sank, man. I thought I was gonna die, no joke. I thought this was the end. I had visions of the old Resident Evil 2 game of being chewed up by this dog. So I just turn around, bro. I throw my hands up in the air. I'm like, okay, man, okay. But you think that dog cared? This dog ravaged my leg. This is what's so smart about the dog. He rab he put his mouth around my leg and he ragged me down. And he was throwing me around like a rag doll. Literally. I was ah god. It was commotion and it was crazy. The smart thing about these dogs though that I didn't know is they can clamp with their mouth without sinking their teeth in. So this thing would not let me go and I'm flying around like I'm some puppet on the string. And the guy runs up. The guy runs up, he gets his dog off me, and he picks me up from the neck and pulls me back to the wall. So he tells me to sit down, so I'm there now in the sun and I'm thinking, oh man, my dad is gonna beat my ass black and blue. Not only have I just caused all of this, but I'm also got his camera which I knew the police were gonna take. So I'm actually, and this wasn't too bad, one of the guys I remember was super sound, he was really nice. I remember, um, he got to the point where it was just a real conversation, I knew that he had a job to do, he was doing his job. And he did it well. He did what he's supposed to do and he got me. That's fair enough. And we started talking about the dog. And he was telling me about how he's, the dog only has a year of work left in her. Um, how she's sad that she's going to have to see him. How he's sad that she's, he's going to have to see her go. And the food, they have to feed it special food. And it was actually quite intriguing. I was actually sad. That, well, this is quite interesting. This guy's sound. And I remember the second guy was there. He was a different breed, man. He just sat there interrupting everything. This nice conversation with questions like, How old are you? I was like, bro, I told you how old you know, how old And he just kept interrupting, asking questions about my family. <laughs> this weird question, man. He had something where he, like, superior superiority complex or something weird. Just telling me the police are come in and how I'm going to all this trouble. He asked my age. And because I looked young at the time, I knew if I was under 16, I would get less of a charge. And I was 16, but I remember saying to him I was 14. And I quickly did the math in my head and gave the date of birth. So I'm thinking, okay, there's nothing wrong now. They called the owner, they called the police. I'm 14, I should get off this kind of cool, still sweating, but unsure of how this was going to turn out. So that's it, the police rock up. And I remember the guy, with the sound guy with the dog, he actually kind of apologised. He's like, look man, like, this is, I, you know what I mean, I'm just doing my thing. I was like, mate, this is your job, bro. Like, this is like, this is what you do. It's cool, man. We're just moving from there. And anyway, the police turned up. The police turned up and looked at me like some, <laughs> like I was some disappointing stepchild or something. I don't know what they were thinking. But straight off the bat, they came up to me trying to instill fear in me about what's going to happen, how now I'm going to have to pay this £4,000 fine, how much trouble I'm going to be in. And all I'm thinking about is these motherfuckers cannot take me to my house. If they take me to my house, my ass is going to get beaten black and blue. And I'm going to be in more trouble than these cops can ever put me in. So me thinking, thinking I'm super smart, I tell them I live with my brother. Yeah, yeah, I live in my brother's house, officer. <laughs> yeah, that's where I live. And at this time, my brother has no idea of what's going to come to his doorstep. So saying that, I give him the address, the police pick me in the back of the car, and then they drive me to my brother's house. In the car the whole way there, I remember this one officer, he was overweight, super tired looking, balding, and he just had that smell of stale cigarettes. The whole journey, bro, he tried to be like some dad's figure to me. He was giving me these life lessons. He sat me and was like, when I was your age, man, I used to work these triple shifts at B&Q. Do you know what B&Q is quickly? It's a hardware store in the UK. I used to work all this overtime and save up all my pennies. And now I'm a police officer and I've made it, man. I've made it good. 
the whole time I'm thinking, man, your breath stinks, man, and you smell, and you just let yourself go. I'm not inspired by you, man. Words are cheap to me. Action is what makes me think, okay, cool. But anyway, man, I let him talk. I just nod. I'm just nodding, thinking, okay, cool, man. I'm really just thinking about the ass whipping I would get if my dad found out. So I'm not really caring what this guy is saying to me. So we get to my brother's house. He lives in this flat area above a tattoo shop, one of the tattoo shops. So I'm outside, and I'm just thinking, please be in. Please be in. Finger touches the button. Buzz. Buzz. And you know for a fact what happened. Nobody answered. Now I'm stood out here kind of embarrassed. I'm outside a flat with two police officers escorting me. Looking like Pablo Escobar over here. And no one comes. No one comes. The police officers look at each other. They're a bit confused on what to do. And they ask me a question I do not want to hear. And that is, where does your parents live? And this is where I had to start thinking quick on my feet and I just convert them quickly. Oh, no, my brother, he's at work. I know where his work is. Let's go to his work. Police sort of look at each other, pit me in the back, and I'm like, okay, let's go to this workplace. So now we're rocking up at his tattoo shop. And if you knew tattoo shops back then, they were a sort of kind of place you didn't want any police activity happening. So here I am bringing the fire to the hornet's nest. So the police drag me in and the studio bell goes off. And this is where I see my brother walk out from the back. Now me and my brother are super close, and I see his face instantly, him trying to assess the situation. So he looks at me, then he glances over to the police officers. One of the police officers chucks the bag on the table, almost like he just found two million pounds worth of heroin, and he just caught a high class criminal. He then proceeds to tell my brother how he caught me vandalising someone's property, and how there may be heavy consequences to my actions. And this is where it started, ended up like a Quentin Tarantino film. Because my brother glances at me, then he glances at the officers while the officers glance at me, then back to my brother. My brother then turns to me and he says these words. These guys really caught you vandalising someone's property? I was like, yeah, man, I had my head down. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. And you took my paint? You took my paint without asking? These are my cans for my work. And you took my camera too? At this point, I was like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I had my head down. Police officer turns to me, he tells me to put my head up. Put your head up when, when someone's talking to you. Put your head up, boy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, right. My brother turns and he says, You wait till these officers are go. You are in serious trouble. You are going to have to pay me back for all the paint you've used, plus buy me a new camera just to teach you a lesson. All in the meanwhile, I see this police officer. He's like a dog himself. He's salivating, rubbing his hands. He's loving it. Oh, yeah, his boy's in trouble. I don't have to do my job. His brother's going to give him the smackdown. So I still got my head down. Yeah, bro, I understand. I understand. Anyway, my brother and the police, they exchange some words with the whole atmosphere being that I'm going to get this ass whipping. The police writes this paperwork out, hands it to my brother, and as he's about to leave, the police officer turns back to my brother, and he says these, Oh, so this bag here, this is all your paint? My brother's like, yeah, that's all my paint. And the camera? My brother's like, yeah, that's my camera, man, you can look through it. Even though on that picture, on that camera, was just graffiti piece after graffiti piece. The policeman goes, oh, well if it's yours, my friend, have it back. So police officer hands the bag back. This bag has 34 cans of Molotov. Molotov is a spray paint brand. And the camera to my brother. My brother says, yo, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Shane is going to be in some serious trouble. So there it is. The policeman thinking he just made a new best friend and made someone's day. He leaves the shop. The shop door shuts. So then my brother, he looks eyes with me. And we just both start cracking up. This guy should have had the Nobel nomination for Best Actor Award because we just pulled a fast one. So fast, in fact, I was even that unsure what the hell was going on. But if you didn't cop the play, not only did I manage to get off scot-free thanks to my brother pulling a fast one, but we got all the art supplies back and the camera. And to boot, to put a little cherry on top, that night, I think we even went out and painted again. <laughs> That was the funniest time, man. But yeah, that is the time Art got me arrested and how my brother saved my ass. Uh, <laughs> now, I really hope you enjoyed the story time. It's a little bit of different content. If Art has ever got you arrested or you got some funny stories you want to share, please, please write in the comment section because that'd be so much fun to have a look at and have a little read. Um, but that's it for today's video. Yeah, peace.